The Everlasting Gospel As Christians, we have all heard comments and questions about those in the world that have never heard the gospel, never heard the name Jesus, and never seen a Bible. You know, the indigenous people of Outer Mongolia and Sub-Sahara Africa and Papua New Guinea? We certainly know those people exist, and many others that have populated geographically isolated regions. For discussion purposes, I will call those people the separated, those having never seen or heard any aspect of Christianity. The questions that arise are like the following. Do the separated have any way to be saved? Are the separated all bound for hell? How does God deal with the separated while they are alive? And what sort of judgment awaits the separated after death? The Holy Spirit gave me the answers to those questions while reading Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. The heavens declare the glory and magnificence of God. The sun, moon, and stars display God's creative celestial design and his cosmic craftsmanship. Day by day and night by night, God's divine astral artistry speaks to all who set their gaze upon it. Words proclaiming the knowledge of God continually proceed from the cosmos. Words discernible in any language and by any race or creed. The heavenly discourse goes out to the ends of the world, even unto the separated. The rising of the sun each day proclaims God's love for his creation and the power by which all creation works together. The gospel for the separated is a creation gospel. The Apostle Paul writes of this creation gospel in Romans chapter 1. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Romans 1.20 Let's break down this verse and its meaning in detail. For the invisible things of him refers to aspects of God that cannot be physically seen, like his nature, character, and divine attributes. The verse acknowledges the existence of God and his unseen qualities. From the creation of the world are clearly seen. Emphasizes that even though God is invisible, Evidence of his existence and attributes can be observed in the created world. In other words, the natural world and its design provide a testimony to God's existence and power. Being understood by the things that are made, the evidence of God's existence and attributes can be understood through the observation of his creation. The natural world and its order point to a creator. Even his eternal power and Godhead among the invisible things of God, his eternal power and Godhead, or divine nature, can be grasped by observing the created world. This means that, through the study of nature and the universe, people can come to recognize the existence of a powerful, eternal God. So that they are without excuse. People, including the separated, who observe the natural world and fail to acknowledge the existence of God, especially his eternal power and divine nature, are without excuse. In other words, the evidence of a creator God is so compelling that it leaves no room for ignorance or unbelief. Therefore, from the two prior passages, Psalm 19 and Romans 1, anyone, regardless of their earthly circumstances, can know and comprehend the existence of God through creation and worship God on that basis. With that, even the separated are without excuse. The Apostle Paul adds another dimension to the discussion in the following passage. Because of that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, 
and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, fitting, or becoming. All people, including the separated, have an innate awareness and desire for God. Most suppress this desire with vain imaginations, philosophies, false religions, a host of sins, and basic rebellion against God. They follow Frank Sinatra's famous song, I Did It My Way. Thus God gives them a reprobate mind, corrupt, perverse, and wicked. That crowd will end up in the lake of fire. So please understand, I am not preaching universalism, as universalism is completely unbiblical. The creation gospel, centered upon God as creator, is found in Revelation chapter 14. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Here we have a creation gospel in the everlasting gospel being preached to all humanity just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ at the end of the seven-year tribulation. With that proclamation, all mankind will be without excuse, as Paul declared in Romans 1.20. Notice that this gospel is an everlasting gospel. It has always been available to the separated throughout the history of mankind. But once a person has heard the gospel of grace, in that salvation is through Jesus Christ's redemptive death on the cross for the remission of sin, they must respond to Jesus Christ. The everlasting gospel cannot save them. A person cannot reject Jesus Christ as Savior, then say they believe in God as the Creator and be saved. Once anyone has heard the gospel of grace, the gospel of grace becomes their only avenue for salvation. As you can see, God has always provided a means of salvation to all humanity, regardless of their circumstances. Man is completely without excuse. God is love and loves his creation. He has always provided an avenue of salvation for those that would seek him. What sort of judgment awaits those of the separated that believe or will believe the everlasting gospel? The following is my understanding on the issue. Since the everlasting gospel is universally proclaimed by an angel during the last half of the seven-year tribulation, those that believe will remain on earth and enter the millennial kingdom if they survive until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Those of the separated that believed throughout history and died will be resurrected at the first resurrection, the resurrection of the just, Revelation chapter 20. Their destiny is also the millennial kingdom as the everlasting gospel pertains to creation, not heavenly places. I do not believe that any everlasting gospel believers among the separated will go up in the rapture, as the rapture is specific for the church, the body of Christ. One must believe in the atoning death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to participate in the rapture, and that would disqualify all everlasting gospel believers that have lived and died during the dispensation of grace. They will participate in the first resurrection, as previously stated. God is a fair and righteous judge. He will judge all mankind based on their response to whatever gospel information each person received and had the opportunity to understand and believe. I do not believe God will hold people accountable for something they never had the opportunity to hear and know. Romans 10.17 So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God for the separated is the language spoken by the heavens in Psalm 19. We in the church have the gospel of grace. The Jews had the law of Moses, and the separated throughout the ages have the everlasting gospel. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? 
How could all men be saved unless God made a gospel available to all men, all mankind, for all ages? The everlasting gospel has, from creation, been available to all mankind, regardless of one's circumstances. If that were not so, then the separated would have an excuse when they stand before God on Judgment Day. But as the Apostle wrote, they are without excuse. Romans 1.20 For that verse to be true, there must always be a way of salvation open to mankind. Praise the Lord for his eternal love for his creation, desiring that none should perish, but that all be saved. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for joining me today in this short video, and I hope this explains what happens and what's available to those that have never heard the gospel, never heard the name of Jesus, never seen the Bible, never been taught anything about Christianity. God bless and may the Lord continue to richly bless each and every one of you.